welcome back to Ostrich Investing. Today we're going to give an update on Highliner Foods. If you recall, we did an intro video with the bull, basin, bear case scenario uh, previously on the channel. And Highliner came out with their Q3 results uh, just a couple weeks ago. And it was an interesting one for me to follow. If you look at the share price chart here, it was trading in August in the summer beneath seven dollars a share about six dollars and sixty cents is about the low there that it reached and as we progressed towards the release of the q3 results the stock started to climb and the stock actually climbed to a little over nine dollars a share before the results were released and and sometimes when this happens you wonder if there's insiders or institutional investors following the story who who are more in the know than you are. Maybe they're you know, closer to fish prices or other pieces of the puzzle that might give them a little bit of an edge. So going into the quarterly results, it, it was interesting for me to think about it and wondering if we might be missing uh, our opportunity here. Uh, that proved not to be the case. Uh, Highliner came out with uh, Q3 results that were, uh, were not great at all and we'll jump into the Q3 release in a second, but the stock price plunged about 30% down to just above $6 a share, and it's sort of been treading water in that range ever since. So the whole purpose of today's video is just to walk through um, the quarterly results and look at the impact to investors as well as um, the potential for a dividend cut and that's something that management came out with in their uh, comments and remarks with respect to the results so let's jump right into it here's the press release and if we scroll down uh, results are sort of red across the board sales are down by 41 million gross profit down EBITDA down uh, net income and adjusted net income down. The one thing that is up is leverage. <laughs> so net uh, net debt to adjusted EBITDA is 5.7 times compared to 5.6 times. So leverage remains remains high in the story. And the CEO Ron Heppenstall, recall we've got a new CEO here. Um, he obviously comes out and is disappointed with the results. He reinforces the cost-cutting initiatives. Uh, the full realignment will generate approximately $7 million in net annualized run rate cost savings, and the company's confident that they'll get to that $10 million savings number that they've been talking about previously. And really, uh, the rest of the release goes on to say that 2019 is really going to be a transition year. They've got some initiatives under, underway that they think uh, will help get the company back to profitable organic growth, uh, but 2019 very much is going to be a, a transition year. So if we jump into the most recent investor presentation here, let's take a look at a few of the charts. On page 18, here's your Q3 year-to-date EBITDA. You can see margins continue to de decrease. Uh, Year-to-date EBITDA or adjusted EBITDA, 50 million versus 53 from the previous year. If we go to earnings per share on the next slide, the picture is um, even worse. Earnings per share decreased uh, over the the nine-month period from 78 cents down to 44 cents on an adjusted earnings per share basis. And leverage, I believe, is on the next slide. You can see here, and this is this is one of the biggest pieces to the story here. Leverage debt is just too high here, and uh, the company is targeting to get that back into the three times debt to EBITDA range. But as you can see, EBITDA is being compressed, and so despite the fact that they are making payments against their total debt it's not enough to, to bring the actual leverage ratio in line. And let's go down. Dividend history. So this is interesting. They highlight their track record of growing dividends um, over the last 
10 years. But then at the bottom of the slide, they say, the board's announced that it has commenced a review of its capital structure to determine the most prudent use of capital. So essentially they're saying the board's looking at a dividend cut here. So we'll talk about that a little bit later towards the end of the video. Finally, on the investor presentation, uh, they have on slide 29, the 10 year EBITDA history. And I just wanna come back to this because we looked at this in the intro video uh, but as you can see here, 2016 EBITDA was 81 million. EBITDA decreased to 66.1. Uh, 2018 EBITDA, you know, may come in at a similar level. We know that the Q3 year-to-date results were slightly lower than 2017. So, if anything, EBITDA is going to continue to be weak here. And again, if we go to the next slide, 10-year uh, earnings per share and return on equity history. Again, $1.29 in 2016, down to $0.93 cents in 2017, and we know that year-to-date is significantly weaker uh, than the previous period, so would expect 2018 results to be uh, to continue that downtrend. Then if we go over into the uh, conference call transcript, uh, and, and credit to the Investor Relations Group here, everything is available on their website. It's great to be able to have the transcripts to sift through. Uh, but one point that I really picked up on is <clears throat> management's being really vague here. And, and that's probably given the reduction in revenue, the reduction in seafood volumes, and uh, the poor results. They're uh, they're not being overly transparent in the way that they answer questions. And, and on the one hand, I don't blame them uh, because I think they're looking to stabilize the business first before they can come out and confidently guide uh, the research community. <clears throat> but here you can see a question from BMO Capital Markets uh, talking about U.S. Sales, sales volumes were down 15% year over year this quarter. I understand the Rubicon customer loss was part of that. If I carve that out, they were still down 11% year over year. That's the worst quarterly decline we've seen in years. Can you provide us with a little more commentary on what happened? I mean, were there any customers or shelf spaces lost? Were there any timing issues this quarter? This is a fair question given the severity of the, the revenue decline. And here's the answer from the CEO. Jonathan, thanks for the question. There's no question that our US food service business has seen some losses in volume. Can't specifically quantify that directly, tie that to a specific customer. But again, when looking at the opportunity ahead, we firmly believe there's significant opportunity for Highliner and hence why we have initiated the strategic initiative under profitable organic growth. So a lot of buzzwords here to really say we, we can't really pinpoint it um, and we're not really able to give you more, more clarity at this time. And so what we know, uh, the marketplace hates uncertainty. And again, I don't, I don't blame management. This is a new CEO here uh, who's uh, probably wants to make sure he's got a real handle on, on expectations before he's going to go out and confidently give guidance. But I just wanted to point that out. Q3 financials. All I wanted to show here is the dividend coverage. So if we go into the cash flow statement. Here we go. So you can see for the year-to-date period, cash flow from operations, we're just going to exclude working capital for now because that can be a little bit lumpy. Cash flow from operations was 56.7 million for the three quarters in 2018. That compares to 40 million uh, from the, the previous period. And if we scroll down and look at common share dividends paid, 11 million over the nine month period. So. Dividends are well covered here. That's not the issue. I think the issue is more to do with debt and leverage on the balance sheet and it's and it's significantly higher than the range that they'd like to um, have it at. So the bottom line is the stock is beaten up. There's no question about that. There could be value here uh, if EBITDA can stabilize and, and debt gets repaid. Uh, in the meantime, I think there truly is a risk of a dividend cut, uh, particularly because management's telling you this. Uh, but also, you know, the board may look at the yield currently about 9% and believe that a cut's already priced in. 
and reducing debt in the short term might become a clearer priority for, for management and the board. Uh, that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, check us out at ostrichinvesting.com for more content. Until next time, don't bury your head in the sand.